I'm at the Mobile Broadband Summit in Delhi, and I'm speaking with Niels Ricks from Barty Airtel. Niels, thanks for joining us today. Can you just tell, tell us a little bit about your job and your role at Barty Airtel? Sure. I uh, am Head of Planning and Engineering for Barty Airtel, and I'm looking at uh, sort of the overall network and network development going forward from a planning and engineering perspective. So are you responsible for the BWA strategy at Barty? I'm actually looking at the whole network, but uh, BWA spectrum use is, of course, one of our key projects at the moment. That's correct. Now, what are Barty's plans for the BWA? How are you going to use that spectrum? Actually, in fact, we've been using the BWA spectrum for quite some time. Um, we do have uh, sort of technologies out there that use that spectrum. Um, but as new technology is emerging, we're actually, uh, you know, working on expanding the uh, technology scope uh, to get better capabilities and uh, sort of new technology into the network. And one of those is, uh, of course, LTE. So there's been a debate in India about whether it's LTE, TDD or WiMAX that's best for BWA. Why has Barty chosen LTE over WiMAX? It's not about uh, WiMAX or LTE. It's actually about the technology that develops the biggest uh, global ecosystem. It's about the technology that will have the uh, sort of the most prevalent global penetration. And uh, based on what uh, GSMA and GSA are publishing uh, and have done in the past and what the 3GPP standardization bodies have done, uh, LTE is, uh, I think, uh, the sort of top contender in uh, becoming the most prevalent broadband wireless access technology going forward. Okay. And when does Barty Airtel expect to be offering commercial services using LTE, TDD network technology? Yeah, everybody wants to have the answer, but yes. <laughs> uh, um, I think <clears throat> we've, we've been trialing um, broadband wireless access technologies and LTE in the network for six months now. So we're convinced products are getting ready this year. Um, the deployment, however, de depends a lot about uh, sort of network readiness and uh, readiness of, of course, backhaul networks, uh, readiness of the device space and ecosystem. So I think uh, the jury is out uh, when the date is, uh, but uh, <clears throat> I believe, uh, you know, deployable products uh, will be available this year. Okay, great. And finally, what kind of applications and customer usage uh, do you expect LTE, CDD to enable? Is it going to be enterprise users or is it going to be residential users with a, a dongle or a tablet? Yeah, I think uh, that's a really interesting question because uh, the Indian market is quite different than other markets where LTE has launched previously. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent two years in the U.S., sort of in the, in the hot phase uh, of launching LTE in the U.S., and uh, what has been done there is, is uh, of course, an extension of uh, cable and uh, fixed uh, broadband technologies where the users are actually quite used to a, a um, you know, broadband space in general. Sure. That is very different in India. You know, the broadband penetration in India is very low, and uh, hence um, we actually have uh, a possibility, and I see this as a huge opportunity, to shape the space in India um, so that uh, we can actually um, you know, give it the Indian spin for um, meeting the challenges we have in this market. Challenge are, um, of course, uh, the price levels and uh, the cost we have to uh, sort of uh, manage, and in addition to that, um, you know, challenges are to get devices into the market. So um, I do believe that, um, you know, with, with India um, sort of probably being the first TDLTE uh, market, uh, sort of looking at the global space, um, we do have to manage um, sort of that space. And the usage will be, um, you know, based on the capabilities that end users have to a large degree and the devices that end users have. So there are a lot of interesting studies where device uh, um, capabilities and device structures actually determine behavior. You know, if you look at a comparison between smartphones, um, PCs and tablets, Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the actual end user behavior and the value the end user gets out of these different devices is actually quite different. They're key differentiators there. So in general, however, I mean, the capabilities of these new broadband wireless access technologies like LTE give us better latency and they give us uh, significantly higher speeds. And that means that applications like uh, TV, video, um, a lot of uh, downloading um, are, of course, prevalent uh, applications. In addition to what we see already emerging today with 3G, which is uh, social networking, which is, um, you know, all the sort of browsing activities uh, plus additional other activities that everybody does over there. So I think... Uh, that's the space. There are a few interesting considerations. One consideration, for example, is that um, depending on which venue you are, your behavior actually changes. You, know, you, you do different things at home than you do in a, a large stadium when you watch cricket. 
um, or, or when you are basically in the bus or in the car or when you're actually uh, somewhere doing a business meeting. Uh -huh. And all these different locations and behaviors uh, put different demands on the network. It's very obvious that somebody that watches a cricket game uh, wants to upload the latest, coolest pictures and clips um, sort of to his friends and family as opposed to somebody that sits at home and wants to you know, watch a video or do browsing at home, which is basically sort of a download activity. And so those things will determine uh, sort of, you know, how we can actually create value for the customers and really the best end user experience. Thanks very much, Nils. You're welcome.